First story. Am I the a-hole for telling my entire family that my 32-year-old female cousin's 30-year-old female child-free wedding isn't 100% child-free and refusing to attend? I need some insight to see if I'm in the wrong because I really don't feel like I am. I, 32-year-old female, just received an invite to my cousin Alex's 30-year-old female wedding. It's stated on the invite that the wedding was child-free. I'm not new to child-free weddings, but what has me frustrated is the fact that there will be children in the wedding. Alex plans on having her and her future husband's 33-year-old male nieces and nephews at their wedding. I overheard her asking her sister if her niece could be the flower girl at a family get-together. This confused me because child-free means no children. So I called Alex and asked. I told her and said that if her nieces and nephews are going, then my daughter, 5 years old, similar in age to her nieces and nephews, should be allowed to go too. Alex said that only those in the bridal party are the exception and that she wants her nieces and nephews at the wedding. When I asked why they could come and not my daughter, she said it's because she knows her nieces and nephews are well behaved, so there will be no issues. She also knows her sister and brother-in-law parent very well and, to top it off, she is a teacher who wants a day where she doesn't have to deal with the children of others. She also said she is closer to them. I told her that her reasoning was ridiculous, because child-free means no kids, including her nieces and nephews. Alex told me I was more than welcome to decline the invite. So I did. I ended up venting to my mother, married to Alex's dad's brother. And while she didn't agree with Alex, she said she could understand her feelings. However, my dad didn't like it and called her dad, my uncle Mitch, asking why my daughter could not come. Mitch told my dad that it is Alex's wedding and she can do as she pleases. She also said cousins are not the same as nieces and nephews, especially since they're in the bridal party. My dad said since Mitch is paying for it, that he should talk Alex into allowing children. But he declined and said that he and my aunt don't believe paying for the wedding gives them a say. And even if it did, he agrees with Alex. This upset my dad. So then he told other family members. Now, several members are upset that Alex and her future husband's nieces and nephews will be there, but no one else is allowed to bring their children. We have a fairly large family, and we all watch each other's children. So finding childcare will be difficult. Most of the family says it's Alex's wedding and her reason makes sense but I and some of my cousins are refusing to attend. Alex doesn't seem to care one way or the other. One cousin told Alex she was bringing her child anyway, to which Alex said, make sure you wear sneakers so it's easier on your feet as you're escorted back to your car, which is how we found out she's having the security guard from her school checking the guest's list and that he knows not to let any children in. Am I the a-hole? Now the top comments. You're the a-hole. It's her wedding and she gets to decide who can come or not. You complaining to your parents and having your dad call her dad to complain is childish. It might seem unfair, but it's her wedding and you don't have any right to argue with her about any decision that she makes. If you don't agree with her rules, then do exactly what she said. Don't go. She isn't forcing you to do anything you don't have to do. You're the a-hole. Sure, it's her wedding and the only kids that will be there are the ones in wedding. If that was the end of the story, I would have said not the a-hole. However, your insistence on trying to force her hand into letting you and other people bring their children, or anyone for that matter, to someone else's wedding is what makes you an a-hole. It's highly inappropriate for multiple family members to be berating her regarding who is and isn't invited to the wedding. They don't have to invite anyone to their wedding. The other thing is you admitted that you have a large family. The difference between having two children and having ten children there is pretty big. Children in big numbers can very easily get really loud and out of control. She told you that you are welcome to decline if you don't approve. And you did. But now you're throwing a tantrum about the situation. And it's a bit ridiculous. Second story. Am I the a-hole for not following my husband's new religious beliefs? I, 28-year-old female, and my husband, 29-year-old male, met in college and have been married for six years. My husband was raised in a strict evangelical household, but broke away from those beliefs around the time we met. We had what I thought was a very happy marriage, until my husband's father passed away in early 2021. He received a cancer diagnosis and was gone a few weeks later. My husband was and is, very understandably, completely devastated. 
he had remained very close to his father, despite no longer following the religious beliefs of his childhood. My husband decided to honor his father's memory by rejoining his church. Unfortunately, it is one of those churches that forbids many things I find fun and relatively harmless, and classifies them as addictions or tools of Satan. But for example, before his father's passing, my husband and I enjoyed having a glass of wine or cocktail now and then, maybe a couple times a week, and also enjoyed weed or edibles, legally, once every month or two. But after joining the church, my husband decided he was an alcoholic and drug addict. He also decided that his occasional dirty video use, we enjoyed it together to spice things up now and then, was also an addiction. He is now insisting that I am also an addict, because I don't want to give all those things up. I tried to meet him halfway. I don't care about weed and am fine never using again, and agreed not to drink at home if my husband truly wanted to have a sober household, but said I would still want to have an occasional drink when out with friends. I will admit I like reading written erotica, which he never thought was a problem until he became religious. He also threw away my toy, saying it was an instrument of the devil. The latest is that my husband's pastor told him video games, all games, not just M-rated ones, are sinful, and now my husband is insisting I have a video game addiction and need treatment. Gaming is a main hobby for me, probably around 8 to 10 hours a week. It's not an addiction in my view, just something I really enjoy. I work full-time, cook, clean, exercise, etc. I'm not neglecting anything else in my life, except respect for my husband's new beliefs, I guess, by gaming. My husband wants me to start going to church with him. He says he will go to couples counseling, but only through his church, not to a secular counselor. I told him that I understand he is grieving and struggling, and I want to be kind and supportive, and if it really helps, we can keep alcohol and weed out of the house. But I'm not going to become an evangelical. Unlike him, I was raised with atheist parents. And I'm not going to restrict myself to activities he finds acceptable under his religious beliefs. I also asked him to please stop labeling habits he doesn't like as addiction. Of course, he now thinks I am an a-hole for being mean to him while he is grieving. Most of our family members and friends also think I should do what he asks in the name of being supportive. So, am I the a-hole? Now the top comments. Not the a-hole. You've already made far more concessions for him than I feel like you need to. I appreciate he is grieving. But you shouldn't have to change your entire life to be supportive. It sounds like pretty much everything you do for any kind of recreation he's having an issue with. It's your personal time. He should have no control over what you do with it. And I definitely wouldn't do the church couple's counseling. I would not trust them to have a neutral, unbiased perspective. 100% agree with this. Counseling through the church will not help. They will just reiterate what he's telling you. Don't change who you are. You are doing a wonderful job of being supportive, but he is asking way too much. I am hoping he comes back to himself and you both can laugh about this later. Not the a-hole. You're doing the best you can and obviously love him very much. He is grieving and being manipulated in that grief by the church. That church is the a-hole here. And cancer? Freaking cancer. Not the a-hole. Your husband is being unreasonable and unhealthy. He may practice whatever faith he wants. Being married does not obligate you to do the same. If your husband doesn't get back to himself, then sadly, I don't know if your marriage will last. I am very sorry. And that's the thing. I'm really hoping that when he gets through this fog of grief, he will get back to himself. I don't want to leave. I mean, that would be a last resort. I want to be kind and patient, just as I hope you would be if I had suffered a devastating loss and wasn't myself for a while. But I don't want to change into someone I'm not, even if that does make me an a-hole. Third story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to help save my mother's house that my dad and stepmom kicked me out of? My dad, stepmom, stepbrother, and I were living in the house my mother originally owned. I moved out after my stepbrother took the box that had all of his mother's jewelry out of his mother's closet and concealed it inside of my closet. I had no idea about it till my stepmom walked into my room and asked me one more time if I still insisted on not letting my stepbrother share the car my dad gave me. I said no and she said okay then, then casually walked to my closet, opened it, pulled out her jewelry box and started yelling. I freaked out asking what she was doing. 
Dad came into the room and she started crying, claiming I stole her entire jewelry box and was planning to sell it. I was stunned and I swore on my deceased mother I didn't steal anything. Yet my dad didn't believe me. My stepmom demanded I get out of the house and I had to leave because of the pressure. My stepbrother admitted putting the box inside my closet and bragged about it. I lived with my uncle for seven years. I missed my room, backyard, and my mother's memories in that house. My stepbrother took over everything. My dad didn't attempt to reconnect for years and kept calling me a thief until recently when I visited my uncle's and he happened to be there. He looked thin and exhausted. He said he found out my stepmom set me up and apologized for not believing me then. He said he forgave her and hoped I'd forgive him because he won't forgive himself if I don't. He then talked about having debts and needing money to pay off debts or he'd lose the house and asked to borrow money from me. I got quiet. Then I asked why can't they sell the jewelry they accused me of stealing or the car he took back. Heck, where's my stepbrother when they need him? My dad shook his head and asked me if my mom would want for me to see him homeless with no help. Or worse, see the house she built and her memories there go to waste. I said I won't pay after they kicked me out of my mother's house because stepmom didn't want me there. You must be wondering where my stepbrother is now. He's dead. He moved to another town, became a police officer for four years, conned widowed women out of their money and houses, robbed them blind and took possession of their legal documents and falsified them to his own benefits. He passed away suddenly at the age of 33 so he didn't enjoy his ill-gotten gains for long. My dad and uncle agreed that by paying I'm saving my mother's house, but it's no longer her house after my stepmom turned it into a shrine for her son, who she calls a hero, and used my room as storage for his things. When I walked in for the first time after years, I felt nothing. The connection is no longer there. I still refused to pay and we had an argument, then I left. My uncle saying I'm making a mistake by thinking irrationally and in spiteful manner and should consider that my dad and stepmom are helpless, sick, grieving and need help. Am I the a-hole? Now the top comments. Not the a-hole. My dad shook his head and asked me if my mom would want for me to see him homeless with no help or worse see the house she built and her memories there go to waste. Would your mom want to see you kicked out of her home? left homeless with no help or contact from your father for seven years, while another woman and son destroyed and spoiled the memories in the house she built? Oh wait, that already happened. Your father poorly chose a woman and her son who were both evil, horrible characters over you. They both ended up sucking the life out of him, and in the end he chose to forgive her for it, and ask you to also. Yeah, no, some things are forever unforgivable, and I say this falls into that category. I am so very sorry you had this man as your father. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to serve my husband? Let me preface this by saying that I have never posted on here before, and I am semi-new to Reddit, so please be kind if I do something incorrectly. Also, I have seen others mention this on their posts. I am posting from my phone, so the formatting might be off. My 30-year-old female, husband 31-year-old male, and I went to my aunt's house yesterday to spend the evening. I bought us all dinner from a local restaurant as a thank you to them for watching our dog for a month. I bought two big trays of food along with some additional sides. On our way to my aunt's house from picking up the food, he says, Babe, the only thing I ask is that you serve me. I say no because he's fully capable of serving himself. There's literally no need for me to serve him his own plate when he can do it himself. This caused an argument, as it always does. Whenever we visit my family, which is very often, I'm very close to my family and love spending time with them. He refuses to serve himself to the point where he would either not eat the food that was cooked or order outside food in. It's also gotten to the point where my grandmother or my aunts would just serve him so he could eat. I, of course, would get scolded and side-eyed because as his wife, I'm expected to serve him. In our culture, women are expected to fix their husband's plate. It's like an unwritten rule or something. I'm Dominican and he's Puerto Rican, for context, but I suspect this is not uncommon in other cultures as well. Like I said, this is not uncommon in our culture, but I truly despise a lot of our masismo or misogyny and sexist traditions. 
unwritten rules and customs, and I don't subscribe to it. My husband respects me and how I feel about certain things and doesn't subscribe to it either, but just hates serving himself when he's not at home. He claims that he feels uncomfortable serving himself in someone else's home and that I should just serve him because I know how he feels about serving himself. I still refuse to do it. In his defense, he's been like this since we first got together. We've been together since we were 17, and we still argue about it. So, Reddit, am I the a-hole for refusing to serve my husband? Now the top comments. Not the a-hole. I suggest you turn the tables and suggest he serve you, which proves to your families he is a manly provider who takes care of his wife. Otherwise, he's just running a sexist power trip. They are baffled that he helps me clean our apartment and cooks dinner, so I don't think they'll be impressed with him serving me. They're just used to their husbands doing squat at home. Shake my head. Not the a-hole. I hate BS like that. His hands aren't decorative. He just doesn't like everyone else knowing that he isn't capable to keep you under his thumb like all the other men do with their wives. He's also the one making it a big deal. He would literally rather starve than treat you like an equal in public. This was hard to read, but it's true. It's so childish and rude. Thanks for the feedback. Not the a-hole. My Gen X mom is from an extremely patriarchal and sexist culture. You know how she responded to that upbringing? By becoming strongly feminist and making sure to treat my brother and I the same, so that I wouldn't have to go through the sexism she went through as a girl. It's tradition is never an excuse. Strong and morally upright people respond to harmful traditions by defying them, not by relentlessly perpetuating them regardless of how they make others feel. He claims he's not asking because it's something he was raised on, more because he's uncomfortable in another person's home. But my issue with my culture, I guess, gets in the way of me actually doing it.